Hello there and welcome to this short tutorial for Shogun 1.12. In this video we are going to take a look at a piece of third party hardware, the Teledyne Blackfly S USB 3 camera and how to install it into a Vicon motion capture volume. Now let's start by getting a bit more familiar with the Fleur Blackfly S USB 3. As you can see these cameras are small, compact and lightweight. The lens attaches to this area at the front and at the back we have the ports for USB and data sync which transfer footage from the camera and ensure it is synced with the rest of your volume. Underneath is where the mounting plate attaches. To do this simply screw the mounting plate onto the base of the camera with a screwdriver and then twist the lens into the attachment at the front. You'll then want to attach a clamp to the truss before screwing the camera onto it. This is why we recommend plugging the USB and sync cables at the end of this process, once you are happy that the camera is attached securely to your rig. With the USB and sync cable plugged into both the camera and the PC, we can now open up Shogun Live. If we come over to the system panel, we should now see any FLIR cameras that have been plugged in. And I'm just going to unplug this quickly just to double check that it is behaving as expected. Indeed, the camera is lost when unplugged and then returns when we plug it back in again, as would be the case with all cameras in the system panel. First, let's just make sure that our system frame rate is correct. Now we need to turn our attention to the GPO lock to get sync. Now, if these settings are incorrect, the connection will break and we will get these warning icons. So if these appear, the trigger GPO should be the first place that we focus our attention on. From this properties box, we can also update the pixel format and the camera frame rate, should we need to. If you have any queries or require more information about any of these settings, please do check the Vicon Docs page. Now, since we are already in the properties panel, let's take a look at some of the other settings that we can change and how they impact the footage collected by the camera. First, to validate what we're looking at, let's change the viewport from 3D view to cameras. And although we already have one of our FLIRs pre-selected, it's actually the other we want to work with in this case because it gives us a better view of the volume. First, let's change the exposure settings and we'll see the impact this has on the camera. Going too low can make the footage overly dark, whereas going too high will potentially result in areas like this which are far too bright. We basically just want to change these values until we have something that we are happy to work with and we can always reset to default if things get out of control. Likewise, adjusting the area of interest across the X and Y values allows us to crop the footage down if there is a specific area that we are interested in. Finally, let's hit the advanced settings button and take a quick look at binning. This is set to none by default, but we also have a two by two option. This involves adjacent pixels being combined across an image which can help improve frame rate in certain conditions. With all of our settings in place, we are almost ready to calibrate the FLIR camera into our volume. First, it's worth double checking that the lens is set correctly to ensure that everything is in focus. By keeping the camera active in the viewport and rotating the lens, we can tweak its focus accordingly. With that done, we can now undertake a standard volume calibration process starting with masking and then moving into the wand wave. As with all video cameras, we can keep the FLIR active in the viewport during calibration, just to validate that the wands are appearing as expected. Once calibration is complete, we can give our FLIR cameras a quick validation test by turning on the 3D view in our view filters. With this enabled, we can now make sure that everything is lining up as expected. Likewise, if we want to quickly validate that markers are indeed appearing properly, we can bring a marked prop into the volume and check that they are being tracked, which they are. And there we have it. Thank you very much for watching this video and we look forward to hearing your feedback. 